Hello and welcome to the demonstrational video on the 2016 Besser Car 494. Uh, walk you around the outside and then we'll start uh, on the inside. So uh, first things first, the bonnet catch on these is just here. You pull that catch down like so. Uh, while we're here we've got the um, blinds that just pull across with a magnetic strip across here to keep them in place. So that's the same on the passenger and driver's side. The windscreen, uh, a very similar system, you just pinch those two clips together, draw that across and you can see there's a section that allows for the arm of the mirror and then that's a magnetic strip across here that correlates to the one on the other side and that's how you blank off the uh, windscreen so that's the darkening blinds for the cab. Your tyre pressures are displayed here but it's worth referring to the tyres themselves uh, as this actually uses specialist tyres with reinforced sidewalls. Uh, just here is your fuel filler, so that's the diesel, you do need your engine key for that, um, so that's how you fill your fuel up. So moving on round to the bonnet. Fairly straightforward this, we've got um, washer fluid fill there, uh, coolant, brake fluid, oil fill, dipstick. Uh, if you ever need to f uh, jump start this vehicle, uh, then the negative terminal is here and the positive terminal is just underneath this flap here. So it's, it's just underneath this flap. Sometimes you need to put the key in this little slot that's there. Uh, probably hard to see on the video, but uh, that little cover lifts up and then the positive goes on there and then your earth is on this one here. So working on around the motorhome then, um, you've got your gas locker here, uh, it's lockable um, so you just need the motorhome keys for that. Um, we have two gas bottles that would go in here, uh, it will need a flexible pipe that comes off the end of, of this here uh, and then that is, so that flexible pipe comes off and then goes onto the end. Uh, it's got a screw fit on the end of it that goes into your gas bottle and the gas bottle itself has got a tap on it and you switch your gas on and off it's on top of the bottle itself. This model's fitted with what they call a crash valve so that's this button here and inside there there's a diaphragm that will sense if there has been an impact and switch off the gas supply to the motorhome so when you first switch your gas on just need to make sure that that little green button is pressed in. So working on along the motorhome, uh, we have here two vents, these are for the fridge. Uh, the way that works is it draws cool air in at the bottom and expels it at the top. Um, so just need to make sure that they're kept free of debris. Uh, in really bad weather conditions or if it's really blowing heavily uh, with wind, then there's covers that you can pl uh, place over the top of these but if it's summer uh, the fridge needs to breathe properly so don't 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 use those but there, there are weather covers in one of the cupboards in this motorhome uh, we've got the awning light just there uh, underneath the awning this is the exhaust for the boiler system so if you're using the boiler to heat the motorhome or your water on gas you'll see steam and uh, exhaust from the gas uh, coming up the side here uh, in cold weather it's nothing to worry about um, it uh, just needs to be kept clean and free of debris that sometimes if you're close, uh, parked close to a hedge or another motorhome um, it needs it'll it's got a carbon monoxide sensor in this so just make sure that that's kept um, free of debris and away from any obstacles uh, we've got underneath here a locker that's underneath the bed. Underneath that cover there is, you can see the, the screw caps there. If you take those off, that's where the leisure battery is housed. Um, on this side we have the awning. We have got a separate video on our YouTube channel that shows you how to use the awning. But basically, this winder here, which has got like a telescopic section here. If you unscrew that, this, this is like a telescopic handle. You basically put the awning winder into there and wind out the awning and um, this will keep in position you can see I'm just turning it there and that allows me to take the handle out 
Uh, so you just put the put the handle into that and wind it, um, wind the awning out, and then there's legs that drop down from the front. Uh, but as I say, there is a separate video for that, and I'll uh, I'll try and put that in the description for this. So working on around to the back of the motorhome. Um, the cameras are here, so that's the lenses for the camera. Just make sure that they're kept clean. Uh, if water uh, is left on there, if it's been raining, it will give a slightly distorted image. Um, but once you move off, that should that should right itself. Okay, on this side of the motorhome we have the toilet cassette. Uh, there's an indication on the toilet itself to tell you when this requires emptying but you'll see when I demonstrate the toilet inside you can actually see um, into the, the uh, waste cassette itself from the toilet so you'll you'll know when it needs needs emptying so to empty this you lift up this handle here slide this out and then this is the cassette that would require emptying so once the cassette is out uh, to empty it you slide this nozzle forward, take off the cap on the end and then pour away the liquid. As you're pouring, so you'd be pouring it away from yourself, as you're pouring, pressing this button here, it lets air in as the liquid is coming out. Um, it does have wheels on it, so you can see the wheels there and that the handle, that yellow hand, that orange handle there, that extends so that you can wheel it over to the disposal point. This requires a chemical um, to be put into this to break down the solids and the smells. To fill that uh, or replenish the chemical, you slide that across, open up the valve like so, and the chemical is poured into there with just a little bit of water into the bottom. The next thing along from that toilet cassette is the fresh water fill. So this is going to fill up the fresh water tank and you do so by opening this up and putting a hose pipe into that and just filling it until it pours out there's an indication on the control panel inside the motor inside the motorhome to tell you how full uh, your fresh water tank is as well as your waste tank that's just a 12 volt socket if you if you wanted to pump water from this um, you could put a submersible pump into a container of water on the floor and pump it into there. Next one along is where the mains electric would come in so cable into there uh, and that's how your mains electric goes into the moto. You can see here this is where the fresh water drains and um, so it's important that you drain the fresh water out of this moto in winter don't leave any water in the moto at all it will freeze and uh, expand and crack the tanks so that's where the uh, fresh water drains from uh, there's a there's a um, control for that inside and that's how you drain down the fresh water the waste water is on the other side on this motor I think I'll just check that now okay so it's on the same side the wastewater drain uh, so we're in the same area here the way the fresh water is drained from there and the waste water is drained from just behind the rear wheel so you can see that tap there and that's how you drain down the wastewater. So, so just we're in the motorhome now, and just while we're on the subject of draining down the tanks, these are the um, switches that allow the fresh um, waste to uh, water tanks to be drained down. So, to drain those, you simply press that button, and you'll hear um, like a, a screw valve open up, and it's opening up the taps for both of those valves. This is the control panel, so it's telling you about your levels, etc. Um, so to switch that on, we've got an on button here. Uh, you can switch on your lights, your um, internal, external lights just there. This control panel, uh, so you sc can scroll through. Um, so here it's telling you what the display is, is telling you about. So your leisure battery. Uh, is in good condition vehicle battery in good condition we do have the lights on so that's why the leisure battery was slightly lower solar panel it gives you information about your solar panel um, 
how many amps uh, and volts your solar panel is delivering you can select which battery you want to use on this i would leave it on l for leisure battery but you can select your vehicle battery if uh, it's an emergency and you run out of power on your leisure battery <clears throat> tank heaters on or off so in really harsh weather conditions you can select the tank to be hit the fresh water and wastewater tanks to be heated to prevent them from freezing you can limit the amps that you want to draw internal temperature uh, you can adjust the level of the brightness of the lights uh, you can set the heater to come on and off at certain times but you can do that separately through the actual heating controls themselves and then you're back to the main menu so the sergeant ec620 is this control panel it's just telling you the model number lights on and off switch there so you can see the uh, mood lighting is switched on and off with that switch your heating controls are just here to switch that on you press the button on off button here so this is what's known as aldi wet central heating so it's got central heating fairly simple this just to uh, switch it on press the menu button select the temperature that you want the motorhome to be uh, select the water temperature um, basically I would just leave that on full you can select the kilowatt output of your electric supply so if you're heating your water on electric and you're well, heating the whole thing on electric basically uh, you can select the kilowatts um, that the heating uses the reason for that is if you're on a low ampage site uh, you need to adjust the kilowatt output for the boiler so on a normal UK 13 amp site, you're fine to use 3 kilowatts. Uh, and that switches the uh, control to gas, so you can use both at the same time, or just electric, or just gas. The settings menu will allow you to set the timings, and you can also do it through this control panel here. Um, so fairly straightforward. Um, Try not to uh, switch the boiler on to water when there's no water in the boiler, which we'll come to in a second. Uh, just on the subject of water, when we go back to this main control panel here, that's the water pump. So you're switching the water pump on and off. You won't get any water out of your, t out of your taps unless that water pump is switched on. So when you first fill up with water, first thing to do is switch on the water pump and then come to your tap switch the tap on and wait until you get a pure flow of water coming out of the tap you then know uh, that you have uh, purged all the air out of the pipe work and uh, the pump is then pumping pure, uh, a pure flow of water out of the tap uh, you need to do that on the cold side and then on the hot side um, so that you know that then your boiler is full and there's no air in the pipes just on the subject of the boiler, uh, to drain this down, this is where the boiler is. To drain this down, there's a little yellow tab, which is just there. Uh, probably just see it better there. Right, okay, so that, that yellow tab, which is just there, that is in the closed position. So that's retaining all the water in the boiler at the moment. If I lift this up, like so, that will drain all of the water out of this boiler here so before you uh, try to draw hot water through your taps or through your shower then this must be in the closed position like so in cold weather also uh, again important that you drain all the water out of this boiler um, if water's left in there and it freezes and expands it will seriously damage that boiler which you don't want so that ye yellow tab there is now open so it's draining all the water out of the out of the boiler <clears throat> just in the kitchen area here we have the fridge and um, so this will work on 12 volts um, when the engine is running it will run on mains electric and it will run on gas as well you can also opt to just have it on the automatic setting which is this one here so to switch the fridge on Press and hold that button and then you can manually select your power source. So that's mains electric, gas and 12 volts from the engine. 
you can see that's given us a warning that it's not operational because the engine isn't running or you can select a for auto so it'll try and find electric then gas then 12 volts so if you leave it in the automatic setting you don't need to worry about unplugging it and then switching your gas on etc it'll do it all for you you can adjust your temperature setting here in really hot weather have it running at its maximum setting in cold weather just have it at a lower setting otherwise it will freeze up so the fridge um uh, if it's not going to be used for any length of time then leave the door slightly ajar there's a little tab here that if you press that down that little lever there sits in at a stand a stood off position so that the door is slightly open and then you don't get stagnant air building up in the um in the fridge uh, that can give a pungent smell the toilet um and shower area i said that the, the toilet cassette is housed uh, it's on the back of this here so the, that cassette slides into this area here so to use the toilet lift the lid open up the valve by sliding this across here and it opens and closes the uh, entrance to that cassette so open it up use the toilet and the flush button is just here so then use the flush uh, the, this this motor has not been validated yet so the toilet cassette um, needs emptying and um, so that's warning you that the toilet cassette um, requires uh, emptying the uh, shower shower is fairly straightforward um, if you're traveling take that off and just let it hang down so that it won't fall off in transit and fall down and crack the uh, shower tray it's a single lever tap again just when you first connect up to water when you first put water into the motor just open up your taps and make sure that you're getting a pure flow of water coming out of all your taps in here as well so that then you know uh, you've purged all that air out of the pipe work just one thing worth noting is that this has got an electric ring the the hob and um, the cooking facilities the, there's an electric ring here if you use that and it's uh, you want to close the lid just just let that cool down first because if you if that will retain the heat for a long period of time so uh, let that cool down first before closing the lid otherwise it will it will shatter the lid so in the front section of the motome here the uh, to give your captain's uh, chairs uh, allow those to swivel you just there's a there's two levers here one there and one there so you just pull those and that will allow the seat uh, to swivel around it'll lock into position when it's forward facing but it won't lock when it's rear facing so that concludes the demonstration on all the main functions if there's any questions i'll be happy to answer those on the day that you collect and we look forward to seeing you when you collect your new motorhome <laughs>